Hi everyone, Nigel here again from NigelShot.com. Hope that you guys and girls are doing great. So today I want to share with you how I protect and master my time to get the results I actually want. And what I want you to learn from this, I want to share with you is that how you too can protect your time, master it, and get the kind of results in your life that you actually want, right? So I didn't realize how I protect my time, actually. I didn't realize how much I protect my time. You know, I say, I say no to a lot of events, no to a lot of activities. Um, and over the last two, few couple of years, especially after my sabbatical, I've become even more protective of my time. And I never thought about it, but it was more instinctual originally. But now that I spend time to, you know, do videos, to plan, to lead organizations, I'm actually thinking more about matters like this. And I realized why I protect my time so much and anybody's time, even patients or my therapist, because I know that time is finite. It's limited, right? There's, it's Time is not renewable. Yes, we have a day by day, but what ha whatever happened yesterday will remain yesterday. Whatever happened a week ago, a month ago, years ago, it won't come back. Whatever, ha whatever happened then will not come back again. And no matter how much money or how much power anyone has, they just can't buy back time. Billionaires can't buy back time. Millionaires can't buy back time. Whatever, when the time is gone, it's just gone, right? And that's one of the reasons why I am highly protective of my time. You know, now that I realize it, I can talk about it, right? So a regular person, you know, say we all have 24 hours a day, right? And assuming we sleep eight hours a day, we work 10 hours a day, and we travel to and fro ten, two hours a day for work, eight plus 10 plus two, that's 20 hours gone already. So you want to take 24 hours, right? So you left four hours. You only have four hours left to eat, to groom, shower, you know, change, toileting, you know, um, me meals, I, I cover meals already, spend time with your family and friends and pets, right? Um, I haven't factored in leisure and travel and things that make me happy, playing music, you know, doing videos, starting a business. Very quickly, you realize four hours is actually kind of short. And if you're not careful or not protective of our time, or not at least not mindful of our time, you will find that, you know, we can just accidentally take on more and more things and filling up our days haphazardly. And then at a much later time, you realize, hey, shit, I lost a lot of my time, you know? And that's why it's not a good idea to have a very laissez fair or haphazard way to time management. To protect master time will require actually patience, planning, and pondering. Not just thinking about it. We've got to take time to think and plan our weeks and days. Okay. When we do it mindfully, when we plan properly, when we ponder and when we have a patience for it, we can then remove or decrease events that are not important to make room for what's more important, you know, such as a project with your loved ones, you know, going to your kids' sports events or rehearsals or milestones, you know, or travel or start a business, start a podcast, you know. But you got to make these decisions for yourself. you got to be mindful of your own time. It's your own life and your own time anyway. Done right, there will be enough time to do what you want and more. So today I want to share with you five management tips that I personally do since 2008, right? At the very top of the list is 100% calendaring. I will always say this to my friends, my loved ones, my family. Show me your calendar and I'll show you your results and your life. If you don't have a calendar, if you are not going to be focused. Even though I'm quite less fair when I speak to people, but I have actually a personal calendar that I use for both work and personal stuff. So everything should be accounted for for a time, such as a time to sleep, time to nap, time to travel to and from work, time to work, exercise, social events and meals. You know, this is the, the big six, right? Then after that, stuff that's important to you, life projects, reading, spending time with loved ones. And you're even going even to take time to review your calendaring your way are you managing your schedule you know because if you look at your schedule you know you can see oh if i avoid this peak period i can save half an hour instead of being stuck in the jam you know 
that just wins you back half an hour or maybe an hour or more. In fact, if when you review a calendar, you can also decide, hey, actually this event is not as important as I thought. Okay? So that's number one, 100% calendaring. Then number two, you got to prioritize what goes into your calendar based on importance. Not everything is important. Not everything is worth your time. Okay? What's the point of being very, very efficient or very productive doing something that doesn't really matter today or in a few years' time? What's the point of that? There's no point. You know, it's like me, like I'm, I'm really good at, you know, ironing. And I'm never going to start an ironing business. I'm never going to start a, what's, the, what's it? Laund, laund, laundromat, a laundry business, right? So I'm not going to spend time doing that. And that's why I end up buying this, like 25, 30 of this shirt. I've been wearing this ever, ever since 2015, 16. And there's all the videos you see, I'm just wearing this. I don't spend time doing stuff that is not important, right? So you, I can't tell you what's important to you. That's for you to decide. But question yourself. You know, ask yourself, what's important to you in your life? Are you spending time on those things that you say are important to you? You know, if they're important to you, then therefore you must make time for them. Right? But of course, don't fill your calendar for the sake of looking busy, looking productive, or being busy. That's not how it works. And that's not why it works. I want to get the results I, that I actually want, right? And I want you to get the results that you actually want based on what's important to you, okay? So with a calendar, if you're 100% calendaring, you get to pencil in what's most important first, all right? Then that also allows you at the same time to say no to what's not important to you. Number three, make it manageable, make it bite-sized, you know? So, Instead of scheduling large chunks of activities, say three hours for walking, you know, three hours for doing something, break it down instead to a chunks of 30 minutes, 60 minutes. It's more doable, you know, like what they say, how do you eat an elephant, right? You don't eat the whole thing. You eat one bite at a time. So say if you have a big task, break it down according to a component. An example, if let's say I'm doing a video, so instead of, of set, setting up a whole day just to research my, my topics, then come up with a, a thing to, to read and then rehearsing a few times if I take, take, the, take the video, that might take four, five hours, six hours. I will instead, I compress it. I spend some time uh, researching in advance, rehearse along the way. And then when, when it's time for me to actually do the video, it's faster. It just takes maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, right? So break down large chunks. Don't take such big chunks of time. Also, if the task is new, you know, like the first time I do video, I give myself four or five hours to get acquainted with the technology, the camera, you know? So if the task is new, you got to give yourself more time. In most cases, if you think it's going to take one hour, I recommend you give 100% more time, which is two hours. Like for me, when I first started doing videos, as, as I said, I took four hours, right? Because I was just figuring out how the flow is, how the tech is, what should I do one after the other, you know? That's an example of me picking up doing videos. Say you from you view for you, let's say you get a new pet and you need to shower your pet. It's the first time you shower your pet. So then you put your calendar or an hour, right? But if it's new for you, schedule two hours or maybe three hours because we do not know what might happen. Your, your pet might throw a fuss, throw a fit, you know, or run away from you, from the toilet or from the bathroom, right? Or push over some stuff where you need to, more time to wash up. So when it's new stuff, buffer in more time. And when it's big stuff, break it down into smaller, smaller more manageable blocks of time. Number four is one of my favorite. You have to buffer in slack and thinking time. It's one of my most important times of the day. Well, if just a block of time, just for slack, just for thinking. And it's throughout the week at this one hour, one hour, one hour. And most of my creative ideas and solutions, be it for business, for work, for social, for personal, right? Always come from this slack time. And I realized, right, this slack time allows me to think creatively to think outside of the box. 
Because when I find, I feel that when everything is pulled so tight, you don't have bandwidth to think. So it just sort of like block you. And it's, you're trying to force it, but it doesn't go through. And it's like them just have to work it through. And lastly, spend time according to your schedule outside your calendar. As I started off saying, show me your calendar and show you your, your results in your life. I want to expand upon that. You have a calendar to aggressively protect your time and to focus on what's most important to you. But remember, when it's time to enjoy the activities, enjoy it. Be focused, be present. Okay? Take care, guys and girls. Bye.